Awesome. Well, kick us off, Thomas. Take us away, please. All right, let's do it. So we're live. Welcome to uh, Ask Duper Anything. So for those of you who don't know, my name is uh, Thomas Shields. I'm a 4.936 duper, which, uh, you know, I've got some qualms with, but we can talk about that after. <laughs> I am, uh, I'm the founder of The Dink, which is a pickleball media company, hopefully you've heard of. Uh, and I'm excited to be here today talking about something that I honestly, I, I feel is incredibly important to our sport generally, and that's ratings, not to be confused with rankings. So I have two people here who have maybe the most domain knowledge of rating systems in pickleball, Steve Kuhn and Jill Braverman. Steve and Jill, thank you for being here. To remind our viewers at home, over 20,000 pickleball players were asked to submit their most burning questions about ratings. And we're going to try and answer them all here today in just about an hour. So we'll see if we can get it done. Perfect. Thank you, Thomas. All right. So let's get right into it. We can go right to question one. So uh, listen, I use, my, um, I use my position here to my advantage and I jump to the front of the line. So this is, uh, <laughs> this is a question for me and this one's for Steve. So Steve, you're considered one of the most innovative minds in pickleball. So let's go through the list here. You founded Major League Pickleball, Duper, which is why we're all here, and Dreamland. So that's a pro pickleball league, assassin ratings business, and a physical retail concept. You are a hedge fund manager by day, which means you kind of make a living off of predicting the future, which is interesting. Um, so... Oh, sorry, I already lost my place. All right, so given all that, that backdrop, why did you get involved in pickleball? Why these three entities and how do these tie into the future of pickleball? Emphasis on the last part there. So uh, why pickleball? I played for the first time six years ago and absolutely fell in love. It was, uh, I fell hard. Uh, I tell people I, I, I had a five night a week habit. It was, uh, it was ugly. It was you know, ruining all my relationships and I absolutely loved it. An addiction. Uh, and uh, I want to share that joy with as many people as possible, which I think is uh, a huge way to make the world a better place. And that, that sounds like a, a, a bit bold or crazy, but you know, uh, our country isn't the most you know, isn't the most united. Sometimes we, we, we've had our we've had our challenges the last few years, but I've never seen an argument about politics or anything else about on, on a pickleball court. People get together, they have fun, uh, they move their bodies, they they get in better shape, they're they're joyful, and we need a lot more of that in, in the world. We need a lot more of that in America, and so that's why uh, that's why pickleball. And in terms of why duper. Yeah, you know, when we started Duper oh, about two years ago, a, a real challenge for pickleball was people really had a hard time knowing how good they were. <laughs> they, they just don't, don't know. Uh, at the time we started it, less than 1% of players had started uh, had ever played a rated match. They didn't have a, a good and accurate rating. So we wanted to create something that was uh, free for people to use, that was easy to download, easy to understand, and make that let that spread because I've seen what that does. If, if you've ever gone to a tennis club or a racquetball club, as soon as there's a ladder and people know where the, where they stand, they want to play more. Right. They, they want to play more. They want to get better lessons. They want to get more lessons. Uh, they just get more involved. Or your golf handicap. People are obsessed with their golf handicap. Like uh, for for pickleball players, yeah, you're at four point nine three six. I'm sure you want to get to five. I'm sure that's a big deal for you. Now you're gonna you're gonna want to play more. You're gonna you're gonna care more about your matches. It's gonna bring you more joy. And so, uh, I've said that the goal for the sport of pickleball should be 40 million players by 2030. So 40 by 30. Uh, we need to have a growth rate, annual growth rate, of 25% a year between now and then to get there. Which, given recent years, I don't think is crazy. Uh, if we do that, that will make pickleball not only the number one participating sport in America but by over double the next four. That's, that's fun, that's exciting. And I think a good rating system is a huge part of helping that happen. Sure, okay. I like that. So then I can only assume you did a lot of research before building Duper 
So what were some of the most important elements of the rating that you set out to build? So one thing that's important is to have an accurate rating, you need as many results as possible. The more results, obviously, the more accurate, makes sense. You also need to use the data from those results as much as possible. So an example I've given in the past, and I'll, I'll give it again, is let's say that, uh, Thomas, you played Ben Johns in singles, and in, in singles, you're a five, and Ben's close to a seven. He's supposed to absolutely yeah. smoke you. He's probably supposed to beat you 11-1, 11-1 would probably be what the duper prediction would be for that. If you play Ben Johns, and let's say you win the first game 11-8, and you lose the next two 11-9, 11-9, under every other rating system, your rating would go down from a five to even lower. Under duper, we say, wow, what a result. We expected you to win two points, and you actually won you know, over 20. Right. Your rating should go way up on that. We learned something special about how good Thomas Shields is at singles. And that means that we can get to an accurate rating much more quickly. Some, some great examples of this recently is we've seen some players crossing over from tennis with some great single skills. Then they, they've had some you know, matches against some of the top players, whether that's Ben or JW. And uh, they haven't always won them, but they've shown that they can, they can compete. And under Duper, they're moving up the Duper ratings based on those, even though they're losses. And I think that that's a, a really great way to get to an accurate rating much more quickly. Got it. I have played Ben in singles, by the way. Uh, how'd you do? No comment. <laughs> I, th I think you mean no comment, no points. <laughs> no comment. I want to go back to one thing you said. So you, you kind of said you, you, you uh, mentioned a, an estimate for about 25% year over year growth, yeah. potentially more. How does the global landscape factor into that number? Well, I'm, I'm incredibly optimistic about that as well. Uh, we're, we're already seeing it. Duper, how many, how many different country organizations have reached out to us and are already putting their results into Duper? Jill, what's, what's the answer to that? Oh, um, putting from international countries? Was that the question, yeah. Steve? Yeah. Oh, uh, at least eight right now. I know and that IFP has over, I believe, 60, 70 countries, member countries right now. So our goal is to get them all signed up on Duper and, and get. And also what we will need over time is connectivity. We will need some of the players playing in India, in South Africa, right. uh, in Canada. Canada and Mexico is already happening. We're already seeing that connectivity. But as we see that, uh, we're going to be able to give you a real accurate rating internationally. Now, one, one thing that was important for pickleball generally is I think there were large, before Duper, there were large regional disparities in, 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 rank, in ratings. If you're a 4-0 in one region, it might not have been a 4-0 in a different region. Uh, we have enough connectivity now with all the big tournaments that happen with the APP, PPA, and other tours that amateurs play in that, that I think we've largely solved that. Uh, to, to really put our money where our mouth is on that issue, we have released a list of the top 50 male and female players by USA Pickleball region. And it shows them not only relative to each other, everyone else in that region, but relative to other regions. So yeah, if, if we weren't confident that we had an algorithm that was doing something accurate, that would be bold because yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna take a lot of heat if people don't think your, your ratings are, are accurate. So we're, right. we feel confident that we already have enough connectivity to do that. That's a, that's a big thing. Now for national tournaments, a 4-0 in, uh, in Minnesota, a 4-0 in Florida, a 4-0 in Utah, 4-0, they're all 4-0s yeah, on Duper, they're, they, they, those connect. Cool, got it. Uh, all right, Jill, I've got one for you. So I think, uh, I think it's obvious that, that Duper kind of reminds tennis players a lot of UTR. And that's why this one's for you. So you're a retired professional pickleball player. At least that's what you claim. And then you just come out of retirement whenever you want. You win a, a gold medal and then you go back into retirement. You're a former D1 scholarship tennis player from Pepperdine. You've been in Silicon Valley building apps and startups for the past six years, and you were heavily involved in the success at Universal Tennis, where you ran their commercial department. So Ed, and Ed's from Dallas, Texas, just north of me in Austin here, he wants to know, I think, unless my geography is wrong, um, where do Duper and UTR branch in different directions, and what does the future of pickleball stats look like generally? 
That's a great question to, uh, to Ed in Dallas. Um, so similar to UTR, Duper is a data and analytics company that aggregates results. So if you've played in any competitive pickleball event, you most likely have a Duper. You may not know it. You can go to myduper.com or download the iOS or Android app and claim your profile. So both systems are universal. What does that mean? It means that they rate all players, regardless of age, gender, or skill on the same exact scale. So our scale is two through eight, and the UTR scale is two through 16. Duper is materially different though, because in addition to looking at margin of victory, points one, as Steve mentioned earlier, it also factors in a winner bonus for if you won or lost the match, which UTR does not do. And it weights the type of result, higher or lower, depending on was the result a self-posted score? Was it a sanctioned tournament? Was it a local league match or a local tournament? And because of this weighting of different types of results, what you get is simplicity. So instead of having a verified UTR and an unverified UTR, which is what UTR does, Duper just has two ratings, singles and doubles. And within those ratings, you have all those different types of results and scores within your one rating. And I think this is just really great clarity of purpose in the mind of the consumer. So I think that's a big difference for Ed. Um, and then I think for both UTR and Duper, the rating isn't tangential to the business. It's not ancillary. I think this is really important. So if you look at other rating systems in the sport, they're tangential. It's like, yeah, we're a software provider and we kind of threw together this rating. For us, the rating is the business. And atop that rating, we are building other tools and technologies for organizers to run innovative events, organize their open play, track their players' improvement. 87% of people in a 12,000 person survey said, yes, I want to play more events. I would play more events if there were more near me. And 70% responded that they thought current tournament ratings were broken. So as far as the future of pickleball stats, I love this question. I think right now we're already there. You might not see this as a duper user, but we see it. We're tracking your win percentage, your average points won, your average duper of your partner and your opponent. And then we're building really cool tools around this that you'll see soon, like a partner optimizer. So imagine this, nerd out with me for one second. I know based on all of the partners that I've had in pro pickleball, I play my best with not the highest duper partner I've ever had, actually with Corinne Carr. So for whatever reason, our games go very well together and the algorithm sees that we have a very high win percentage together mm. and a very high percentage of points won together. And so it's little, very cool, fun tools like this that we're building to help deliver more and more statistics to the player. And then the last thing I would say on stats that I think has vast implications for the sport is getting into computer vision. So this notion of being able to deliver uh, real time or immediate statistics in a match, plus the implications of that technology for uh, more accessible virtual refereeing, um, I think really blows the door open in terms of how we could scale fair events in the future is having some type of virtual technology and computer vision like this. Right. Cool. Okay. So speaking of, of innovation, Steve, what is, what does the roadmap look like for, for Duper? What's, what's coming down the pike in, in terms of, of, of innovation? Well, I, I would say that we're always trying to make our algorithm more accurate and more reliable. Uh, we just came up with a really interesting way to get a good sense of how accurate someone's Duper is. Uh, we have something called a half-life, which measures how many matches you've played and, and how recent they are. The higher your half-life number means you played a lot of matches and, and, and you played them recently. The lower that is, that means you played less. Now for a tournament organizer who's trying to make sure that a, 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 a tournament is fair, they can look at not only your rating, but what your half-life is. And they can then say, if, you know, if you haven't played much singles lately for six months, it might not, your rating might not be as accurate. So we're really always trying to think of not only ways to make the, the algorithm more you know, reliable and, and, and you know, accurate in that sense, but also how can we give tools to league organizers or to clinic organizers to help you uh, to make sure that people are playing at the right level? It's a challenge it. right now, because right now I, I think the current systems are not really helping tournament organizers create fair play. And we can talk about that more as we go on. 
Okay. Okay. And I think, you know, I, I sort of brought it up at the, at the beginning. There's a, there's a major difference between ratings and rankings. And my question is, what do you say to the people who are sort of calling into question the duper ratings? Because somebody like uh, uh, an Anna Bright is, is shooting up to, to top 10. And she's been playing pro pickleball for like a few months, it seems like. So how does that how does that happen? Because we're we're not only seeing that with like a, an Anna Bright, we're seeing it on the men's side as well. All these players who are you know you could say are, are relatively no names are, are are shooting to the top of the 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 ratings of late. Yeah, look, there are there are places for rankings and for like a scoreboard and a points accumulation, like an ATP tour or you know, like they have in, in golf. They have a, I forget what it's called the in the PGA tour. There's a place for that. What, what Duper's place is, is to try and help underestimate, given a person's playing history, how likely are they to win a match against any other player? That's what we're trying to estimate. And that's a different thing than saying who's won the most matches this year or who's won the most. Both right. things are valid. Both things are interesting. I'm not saying the other one's not interesting. It's just a different thing. That's what we're trying to do. So if we see Anna Bright, say, say she comes in and say she, again, she loses to Anna Lee Waters, 11, 8, 11, 7. Well, we can compare that loss versus other players in the top 10 to, to Anna Lee and say, how did she do relative to them? And therefore, it, it, how would we then use that data to predict how would she do against other players in the top 10? And but, you know, by using that result and by being, you know, we, we, we say we have a very dynamic rating. In other words, we're, we're using data that you get very quickly to move people up and down. And I think that that's, we have a very dynamic sport. We have players that have, haven't played very long that are that are obviously top players. Uh, we saw that with Rob Nunnery, we see with Anna Bright. We see a lot of players come from you know, other sports and, and can quickly be a relevant player in the top 10, top 20. Sure. Uh, without, without a good rating system, you, you won't capture that. Got it, okay. All right. So in this sort of like utopian vision of a, of a tournament that you have, you're saying that players would be slotted into brackets based on their real time duper. So I know that you've played tournaments at like the 5-0 level, but according to duper right now, you're 4.196. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So how does that make you feel? And would you be okay playing at the, the 4-0? It means, it means I'm fired. It means I lost my job. Shut up. It makes me feel horrible, but sadly, I must admit it's accurate. I was a much better player six months or a year ago than I have been. I, I haven't been, I've been focused on other things in pickleball world other than me, me playing and my skills have definitely deteriorated. I, I can't seem to hit a backhand dink to save my life. I just can't, I can't do it. I don't know what, what has happened. I used to be decent at that. Now I'm terrible. Uh, also, I think in the whole duper database, my win percentage has to be the lowest. It's, it's actually stunning how bad my winning percentage is because people still think I'm close to a 5-0 player and I'm not. So <laughs> that tell, by the way, if your win percentage is low, that means that you overestimate how good you are, or at least other people do, uh, that I am the, uh, I'm the poster child for that in Duper right now. Sadly, I'm gonna work on it. I'm gonna get my game back up. I wanna get back to my, yeah, around your 4.9 level and we'll, we'll see if I can play a little better. Yeah. Well, you, you would think working in pickleball, you'd be a good a good pickleball player or at least be able to play more. I've, I've found the the opposite. I've been playing less and less. So exactly suffering, suffering from the, the same issue right now. Exactly. Um, so on the, the topic of, of ratings, Jill, Jenny from uh, Boca Raton, she wrote in saying, I'm a 5.154 duper, a 4.5 UTPR and a 4.5 WPR. And she has an SSIPA rating or a SIPA rating. So she says, or she asks, who do I trust? Which rating is right? Tough question. I like it. I like it. Um, you know, a rating is only as good as the data that goes into it, full stop. Um, and your UTPR takes into account of, you know, potentially very small subset of your results, your WPR again, takes into account results from one software provider. Um, and I believe similar with SIPA. And these are, these are siloed, isolated systems and pools. And they're not interacting or connecting with the broader community and your broader community of play. 
So Duper looks at everything from your rec play scores to your club scores, your local league scores, your competitive right. events, your sanctioned events to international play. And then similar to UTR, any entity or organization or person, individual can send Duper results and Duper will take those results completely for free. Now, are we perfect? Absolutely perfect right now? No, no. So are players sometimes missing a few results or missing you know, one event? That does happen, but you can very easily write into our team. We will aggregate those as results. We will accept results. So you know, we're in inning one of the duper data aggregation and duper as a business and uh, getting better every day. Steve, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I would just say, if you're playing in a league or in tournaments that aren't in duper and you'd want them to be, please ask them. Uh, we will onboard them as fast as we can. Um, we, you know, we, we, we want that to happen. Um, yeah, I think I, I, uh, I saw the podcast you and Thomas did about, and you talked about how Thomas was, he likes, sometimes we play in rec play, you just want to play rec play. That's fine. But there are days when you go out with your friends and you want it to count a little bit more. And he says, but when they're playing, they're going to say, today we're going to put it in duper. Yeah, definitely the, the intensity level goes, ratchets up a little bit. It's probably still not a tournament intensity level, but you have that ability with, with, with Duper. If you want to make it a little bit more spicy on a certain right. day with your friends, right, you're right. able to do that. That's fun. Okay. Yeah, a little, little, little more on the line when you're just going out for, for some rec play. Make it a little bit more fun, a little more interesting. I like it. Okay, so I think, Jill, you, you kind of already touched on this, but uh, the next question was from Lori, who's a tournament organizer in Texas, and she just wants to know how she can get results to count for Duper for her, her players in her tournaments. Yep, and it looks like, Tom, you've had some good questions here live um, in the chat. Uh, Tom's asking, how could Arizona Pickleball Player League results be reported? And Quint, really good, does Duper provide an API? So I'm going to address that right now. So as I just said, any organizer using any software, pen, paper, or Excel can send in their results to Duper. You can message us at support at myduper.com. We'll help you get all that data cleaned up. For larger software providers, we do have an existing API. Again, please message support at myduper.com. We'll get you set up. Um, and then maybe the most easy solution is we just launched our own tournament management software last week. Very exciting. There are zero upfront costs to any tournament organizer who wants to come in and run a pickleball event. Um, uh, in this software, what I love about it more than maybe anything is it's basically self-run or self-managed. You don't need a tournament desk. So players can walk off the court and post their scores, receive their right. next court assignment, and boom, it's running itself. So Lori, I would even say to you, um, if you don't want to use the duper software, but you want your results to count still, you could just even implement as a hundred person tournament did last weekend here in my backyard, the players self posting their scores. So as a condition to entering your event, they have to post their scores before they move on to their next round. And that's another way to do it is just having them literally download the app iOS or Android and, and post their scores. Got it. So, so Mary actually in the, in the Q and a here, who's, who's uh, watching right now, she asks how many tournaments do I need to play in to get a, uh, a rating. So I think that kind of falls in line with what you were just talking about. It takes one result, one result against anyone else who has a duper to get a duper rating. It takes between five and 10 to start seeing what we call reliability. So this hyper accuracy. And let's say that you, Mary, and your friend go out and play, and neither of you have a duper. You might think, well, those scores will never count, right? That's actually not the case. Because once one of you touch anyone who has a duper or has touched someone with a duper, we will retroactively go back and assign a value to your matches. So this is the vision Steve set out to create, that no data is ever lost, that your efforts are always rewarded, and that every point counts. Got it. That's pretty interesting. Okay. I didn't know that. So Steve, this one, uh, this next one's for you. Um, on the topic of, of ratings and in, in scores, there's been a lot of interest around universal ratings, which by definition would be genderless, right? Correct. So Fergus from La Quinta, California wrote in and asked, why are mixed and gender doubles combined into one rating? 
And Pat from Newport, kind of on the same note, he asks, I partner with many men and women, all with different dupers. How will the matches I play with them affect my duper rating? All right, so let's talk about separate ratings for same gender and mixed. I think there is a case for that at the pro level. I, I think there is, and we, you know, I'm sure you know, the Dink and other people have talked about some players are seemingly better at same gender, similarly mixed. I think there's a case for that. You know, and, and we're working with the pro level players to think about a way to implement that uh, you know, accurately. That, that's, a, that's a challenging one though. What, anytime you take more results and then you split them, you, you risk making your, ac your rating less accurate. Uh, let me give you a, a challenge. Just, there are some players in say gender doubles, you know, Ben and Colin Johns. How do you, if they almost always play together, how do you, if you don't look to their mixed results, how do you know which one of them, of the two of them is, is, the, is the better player? You need to look to something to determine that. So it's, it's, it's a challenging topic. It's probably longer than I can give you a, a reasonable answer to on this, but happy to dig into that at a very, very deep level with anybody who wants to. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's interesting. So, but, but beyond that, I think at lower levels, at the, at the rec level, it, you know, your gender really doesn't matter that much. You know, you know, the, the, the heart of for pickleball for a lot of people is the place where you, you go to the church gym and you put your paddle down, there's four paddles there and it doesn't matter what age or gender people are. For, for most players, the sport is universal. At the very, very high level, there is, I think it becomes a more technical question on how we deal with this. That's fair. And, 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 we're, and it's gonna be hard and it's gonna be challenging and we're gonna have people that have different views on it, but we're gonna do our best. I think at levels below the top pro level, that's just, it's just less of an issue. Fair enough. All right, Jill, ready? I, 10 seconds or less. Why is Duper better than any other system? 10 seconds or less. I just lost two seconds saying that. Okay. It looks at all of your data, all of your results and how well you performed. Um, margin of victory is critical. Every point matters. Your effort needs to be rewarded. It deserves to be rewarded. Um, Duper cuts across geographies. An 18 year old 4.123 female in California is going to have an awesome match against a 42 year old male uh, of a similar Duper in Toronto, Canada. It's dynamic. Your rating changes after every match that goes into it. And it's that um, total transparency and accountability the sport needs to grow and, and grow intelligently. And um, there have been a few live questions come in that I would love to, uh, I would love to address. Actually, um, Cameron Blackwood, a professional uh, uh, athlete and a, a member of the Duper fam wrote in, and I, and I think this question is so important. Um, does my Duper rating change depending on other players wins or losses after I played them or does mine stay the same? I love this question. I was talking to Altoff Merchant the other day and he was mentioning, Zane, I think you're in this, this Zoom right now, that you guys played against Dylan Frazier and JW Johnson a little bit before they took off and everyone knows how good they are right now. And you guys, you guys lost. And the cool thing about Duper is it tracks how well your opponents went on to perform in their subsequent and future matches. And it's smart enough to see, wow, Dylan and JW went on a terror after beating Zane and Altoff. We're not going to punish Zane and Altoff as badly uh, as we thought we were going to originally. Um, Steve or Thomas, do you have any questions there? Would you add anything to that? No, I think that's that's well said. I think Zane and all top win. <laughs> Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten times. Um, all right, so we'll be we'll we'll kind of go into extra innings here because uh, we kind of cruise through a lot of those questions. But uh, here's here's a, a softball. So will playing lower rated players reduce my rating? Uh, so. Let's say that you and your partner are both 4.5s yeah. and you play a team of 4.0s. Duper would probably predict that result would be a roughly 11.5, 11.5 result. If you do better than that, you beat that, four, that, that team 
by more than that, your rating will go up. If, uh, however, if you, you can win 11.9, 11.9, and your rating will go down because that would say you're supposed to have a sizable difference. 0.5 is a sizable difference. By the way, interesting thing about Duperth is we found that if a match is more than 0.25 difference, there's less than a 10% chance of, of, of the other team winning. So you're, you're supposed to win that match and you're supposed to win it fairly easily. If you, yeah. if you do not, your rating could actually go down slightly, not a lot. You don't, you rarely go down a lot while winning a match. You can go down very slightly. Right. Uh, it's more likely for you to go up while losing if you're playing it. But here, here's you know, one thing we talk about is in standard tournaments today, brackets, uh, you know, ent entry brackets are about uh, 0.5 wide. You know, four is from 4.0 to 4.5. Well, in some sense, that's probably not tight enough to really have fair play. The 4.5 team in that bracket against the 4.0 team in the same bracket is going to almost always win. So we've looked at some really interesting amateur results. Uh, there was a tournament earlier this year that had 64 different brackets in it from you know, men's 4.0 to mixed 3.5 to seniors 4.5, et cetera. And we, we looked at the results and we found that, so in a 4.0, bracket, you're supposed to be from four to 4.5. Uh, we had, they were using a, an alternative rating to ours. We looked at the dupers of everybody in that bracket. And we found that the average team that won in a 4.0 bracket was on duper of 5.1. Uh, so and if you looked at the brackets, if we, if, for 64 brackets, if we could choose, if this the average number of entrants per bracket was at, at close to you know, 25 or 30. If we could choose three teams, we almost always got it right. Yeah. We almost, almost always got it right that one of those three teams was gonna win the gold. That probably tells you that the 0.5 brackets, especially with the rating systems now that are, are probably not dynamic enough, they're just not doing a great job of creating level play. And right. what that means and why that's bad for the sport is people travel to go to a tournament, they spend some money, they have the entry fee, and sometimes they'll enter and they'll get beat like 11, three, 11, two, and 11, four, 11, five. And it's a bad day for them. It's a bad experience. Uh, under, under Duper, what we would suggest is you break down all the entrants into groups of 16, top 16 or group A, et cetera. Th those, gr those groups would be very narrow then, would be very competitive play. And that allows you to have, everybody have a much better play experience going forward. And we're, you know, we're advocating with that and we're doing experiments with that at various clubs around, around the country, including my home club at, at Dreamland, and people love it. It's much more fair. It's much more, you're, you're right on your level. And it's, it's you know, we're, we're encouraging other people to do the same thing. Okay, okay. All right, so if I, uh, if I, if I have a, a, a decent win at, uh, at the, the 5-0 level, and then like one weekend, right? And then the next weekend, that person who I just beat, goes and has a, a miracle match versus uh, Zane and Altoff and uh, they win. Does my rating then go up? Yeah, it goes up even more. It says that that win was even more impressive than we thought at the time. Yes. Interesting. Okay. And then I imagine the half-life plays in, in that the, the further my match gets away from, from their miracle win, Right, the less, matter, less and less it has on my rating. Exactly, and half life is obviously a, a concept taken from you know radioactivity. Yeah, you know, it's like how, how much. So a match today counts twice as important as a match fifty days ago, which is four times as important right. as a match hundred days ago, etc. Okay, how do you protect against somebody who's like? You know, I'm only going to enter the, so by the way, this is a big golf thing. I mean, all my buddies do this in golf, right? <laughs> you only enter the scores that were good because when it's not going your way, you're like, ah, screw it. We're not, we're not entering the score today. So similarly, what about these people who are only going to enter their, their wins or, or best performances? Well, it's, it's a zero sum. In that respect, it's a zero sum game because if, if they're not reporting that score, then if they, they did poorly, the player that did do well doesn't get it reported. So there's an incentive for someone to report it. Uh, and uh, what, what it can do is what, if even one player reports it, uh, then unless somebody else denies it, unless somebody else you know, you know, says that that wasn't true, it's, it sticks. So 
if, if your odds are ready to go up and you have a big win, you're going to put it in. <laughs> so somebody will do it. It's the right incentive structure. I would, I would I would love to touch on this notion of match validation. And I see there's so many questions coming in about post a score and match validating. So we are making it even simpler to post scores. And one way we're doing that is first off, only one person on the opposing team needs to validate the match right now. That's the logic. So to okay. make that to make that even simpler, we're going to reverse it. They have to invalidate it within 72 hours. Hmm. And if the opposing team doesn't invalidate it within that 72 hour period, the, right. score, the score is posted. Okay. Can't wait for those customer support tickets. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. So do you want to, Jill, do you maybe want to answer uh, Tom's question here? So he asked, my duper is showing just over 4.2. Is that equivalent to a 4.2 UTPR? So what I coming from UTR, my background there was the scales 2 through 16. It was this complete re-education of the tennis community on what it meant to be a 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11. And the beauty of Duper, and I'm so impressed that Steve designed the system this way, is that the vernacular and the rating, the numbers, the scale is really similar to what we're already familiar with. It's just more specific. It's just more accurate. And as I said in the chat, it expands for the pros. So we see senior pros coming in, um, senior female pros around this like 5.2 to 5.4 level, uh, female pros coming in around 5.4 and male pros coming in really similar to that 5.4, 5.5, 5.6, all the way to Ben Johns at about a seven. So our scales just expanded and more specific at 5.0 and above. And then as you heard Steve mention earlier, we know for a fact that competitiveness occurs within 0.2 five. So the future of brackets and tournaments is not 4.0 to 4.5. That's a blowout by duper. If you take a 4.0 duper and place them against a 4.5, the future is tighter bracketing. And Steve, I'd love to talk. I'd love to hear you kind of espouse on what is a tournament? What could a tournament look and feel like being run by duper? What are the pain points it could solve for players and organizers? Well, you know, the first the first pain point is you have very different levels of players, even within brackets, because two reasons. Again, 0.5 is too wide, and you have a wide variety of players. The, the, the true range, it, when we look at that amateur tournament, Thomas, of where the range should be 0.5, the true range on Duper was on average over a point. Uh, so it, you're, you're having just huge disparities of quality right. and play. That's a problem. So right. to make for better play, First of all, you're going to be have a much narrower range. You're actually going to play teams that are near your quality. Here's another huge problem in our, in our, our view about tournaments are run on something that we think could be better. You, you, you show up to a double elimination tournament. You show up at 8 a.m. and you play. You might be done at 9.30 a.m. And you might be there at 7 p.m. And you don't know. <laughs> and that's, that, given the modern world and how busy we are and how people's lives are, that's not that's not a great experience for people either. You just can't right. cannot possibly know that. So what we suggested is again put it in groups of sixteen, and then every every team gets to play four matches and what we call a, a compass draw. If you win, you play another winner. If you keep winning, you, you get to play. But everybody gets to play four matches. Even if you go zero and three, you get to play four matches. And you know you're going to be basically you start at AM, you're going to be done at noon. Uh, if you're a true you know, degenerate pickleball player like like uh, like my like I used to be. Like I want to be again, and that's not enough for you. Four matches, you can sign up for the next tournament, which starts at twelve thirty, or the, the tournament that starts at five p.m. You can then scale your day and have a, a, a sense of control over over your schedule, uh, which I think is would be a real great change for pickleball. So again, teams are going to be much more evenly matched, and you get to play four matches guaranteed. To me, that's a way better tournament experience than most yeah. people are having right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. How about a, an example specific to me? So we brought up, I think I'm what, like a four, nine, three, six or something like that. Right. So I think about a year ago, cause at the St. George, uh, you know, the, the PPA a year ago, it would have been, 
I got, uh, I got maybe got lucky, but I got my first pro win. And then I had another one uh, last summer. So I think I was um, probably like a five, four or something like that, but I haven't played or registered any matches. I've, I've been playing significantly less over the past six months or so. So my half-life actually has brought my rating down to uh, a four, nine. So if I go play next weekend, what bracket would you recommend that I, I play in? Should I play in four or five and go get a gold medal? Or is the rating saying I should play in five Oh, and I'm going to have to kind of punch above my weight a little bit. You, you should sign up for the tournament and the tournament organizer should organize you into the 16 teams closest to you. And that's what Got you should it. play with. And you should play four matches. <laughs> so at, if it's a big tournament and there's lots of entrants, that would mean a lot of teams would be right near four nine or, you know, they would be, Super competitive every match. By the way, another great stat that we looked at from amateur tournaments. Uh, you, you, again, these, these ranges are 0.5 wide. We looked at the results, how many matches that of two, two out of three matches, how many of them actually went to the third game? In other words, how often did one team win the first game and another team win the second game? Now, if you had really good, accurate ratings and teams were grouped you know, perfectly, say they were all exactly even, you should win half the time. That should happen half the time. Now, obviously, that's probably a stretch for a realistic goal. But a realistic goal, I think, for a good rating system and a good tournament organization is that matches should go to the third game, say, 35% of the time. What we found in tournaments and amateur tournaments, it's, it's usually around 20%. In other words, the team that wins the first game wins the second game 80% of the time. That means that the play is just not that competitive. I think under our, our system, we get that up to 35 maybe even 40%. And that just means that everybody's having more fun because every right. time you actually have a real chance of winning. And it's also, it's not that fun to win 11-1, 11-1. It, it's just way better for, for play for everybody. And I, I would love to just piggyback on that. There was a recent um, event. I'm not going to name APP or PPA or any other, you know, acronym alphabet soup, uh, a tournament organizer, but there were over a hundred brackets in this event. Let's think about that for one second. So, you know, three, five women's 55 up 60, 65 cent, right? You have to do that every permutation with age and skill. You said there were a hundred different brackets, hundred different I, brackets. I couldn't even so, like make up a hundred different, but I don't even know how that's possible. Not to even, not to even touch on the, the difficulties of organizing and running an event. Let's not even touch on the organizer side right now on that. Let's just talk about what that does to the culture of the sport. That is actually the reason American tennis has basically been on the decline for over 25 years, really until UTR showed up with totally accessible, affordable, intuitive, easy to use software that enabled organizer to run more smart, innovative events. So I grew up playing tennis, girls 12 and under. That's what the USTA expected you to play in. Well, when you look across <laughs> age, and, age and gender, I could have maybe 60 people in my community against whom I could play. But if you tell me I can only play girls 12 and under, I've got maybe two other people against whom I can play. It was the way we killed American tennis. So looking at pickleball, we've got to be so careful not to fall into the same traps that kept tennis down. 66% of first-time tennis players never returned to another competitive event after their first event because it wasn't level-based. They're getting killed O and O. So what we have an opportunity to do with the duper is help on the organizational side of the tournament. So there's not a hundred brackets, but also help the sport return to its ethos. We all start pickleball on a court with someone 40 years older or 40 years younger than us. And then as we get competitive, we silo ourselves into these tiny brackets. Why are we doing that? We're not doing it because that's the culture of the sport. We're doing it to protect ourselves to find level-based play. We're going about it the wrong way. All we need is an accurate rating. And then we can see the magic that UTR helps tennis experience, which is older people learning a little bit from younger people, younger people learning from older people, different genders on the court. That is the, hopefully the return to the ethos of the sport. I think we, we can have Steve, is there anything you want to add to that? One, one more thing. If you're going to a tournament and say you don't have a partner or you have a you had a partner and your partner had to cancel the last minute. If you're playing in, you know, you know mixed doubles 4.0 50 plus and you're a male, you have to find a woman who's 50 plus in yep. that right exact category. It, that's a hard thing to find. Now we can just say, hey, you're playing in, in, 
in, in, a, in you're a 4.0 and your partner was a 4.0, your partner dropped out, find any partner of any age or gender who's around a 4.0 and we let tournament organizers define what a round is. Maybe that's 0.1 or 0.2 or whatever difference relevant for the importance of the, of the event. And you can substitute a partner, anybody like that. It just makes much more easy to find, to find a replacement partner, to find a partner in general. And that's, to me, that's just a, 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 that's another huge advantage of what we're doing. So are you suggesting that when players register for a tournament, they don't go and say, I want to play in 5-0 this or so. It's all based on, like they register for the tournament and then it's all based on the tournament director to determine which division or, or bracket you fall into. I, I'm not saying we shouldn't have gender doubles or senior doubles or seen, we shouldn't have events like that. There should be events like that. That's absolutely fine. Sure. Just like, you know, just because we have a rating system doesn't mean you have to play every rec game on Duper. <laughs> you, uh, people are allowed to do what, what they want to do and those tournaments are fine. There's a, there's a place for them, for sure. I'm just saying, an, an interesting alternative is you come and play with whoever partner you have, no matter what their age or gender, and we find the 16 team, you know, the 15 other teams closest to you, and that's who you play with. Uh, and you get four matches for sure. That's that's an, 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 a different way of doing a tournament. I'm not saying that's the only way they should be going doing it from going on. I'm just saying that would be a good way. Also, yeah. how about this? You show up and we find the 16 players that are closest to you, Duper, and we have a hat tournament, just like we had a hat tournament on Pickleball Night in America the other night with the pros. That'd be fun. And again, your partner's gonna be roughly your level and your opponents are gonna be roughly your level. You can, you can do a lot more, or I'll even go one step further. We could have team events where it's MLP style. You bring four players and maybe this is what we call a, a, a duper 20 tournament where the sum of your four dupers has to equal 20 or less. And you play against other teams. How much fun would that be? Like we can create different formats that are super fair that I think people will find absolutely compelling to play with. And that means that we're gonna help grow the sport. And without an accurate rating, you couldn't do this. That, that, it was, just wouldn't work. Got it, okay. Here's a, here's a more interesting one, a more creative one, if you will. So Casey Patterson, who's an uh, Olympic volleyball player, um, you know, played for, for Team USA. He is co-hosting our podcast, Pickle Pod, right now. So he, he asked, can we add, and I'm going to change his question a little bit. He said, can we add elements for increased ranking for overhead attack speed and wingspan? So my question, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm just going to tweak it a little bit is, is there an opportunity to add in factors based on certain like uh, physical advantages, like somebody who's like a six, five person when they're playing like, uh, you know, like a, a five, five, uh, but they're the same rating. Like, is there any sort of, is there any sort of nuance that we can add in to, to accommodate something? Like that? <laughs> I'm going to push back on that. I want to say that, I've, uh, I've, I've dreamed of like Simone Biles versus Chris Bosch match in, in, in pickleball. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah. if they're the same duper, it should be a, it should be like 50, 50. Six, seven versus like four eight. It yeah. Just, uh, like, uh, yeah. Both uh, obviously both amazing athletes. Like, yeah, world world class, world changing athletes. Uh, but if they're the same duper, my I wouldn't know which way to bet. <laughs> By the way, one, one other thing that we haven't mentioned is. We do make predictions, both for uh, all the APP events, the PPA events. We do it for our, right. our Tuesday night, Pickleball night. And it's amazing the run of, of predictions that Duper has had this year. Uh, anybody can go back and review our results. Uh, I would challenge any other rating system to, to match the results we've had. We've had a, an incredibly good year of predicting results. Yep. And I would just love to piggyback off of that for one second. We have Quint writing in and Scott as well. They're saying, um, you know, often a tournament director will combine a 50 plus player group with 19 and 35 in the four up categories. And, you know, I didn't sign up to play kids 25 years younger than me. So I want to be really, really clear on this point. The reason you feel like you didn't sign up to do that and you don't want to do that is because a 4-0 UTPR 50 year old is not the same as a 4-0 UTPR 19 year old. That's why you don't wanna do that. It's not that you have an age bias or you don't wanna play someone younger. You don't wanna get your butt kicked and I appreciate and I respect that. So here's the important thing on Duper, they are equal. 
It's hard. It's hard to conceptualize just like it's hard to conceptualize Simone Biles and a six foot seven person having an equivalent match. But if their dupers are equivalent, they are equally skilled. Now, let's say, Jill, I don't believe you, but I'll play a couple of these events and we'll see what happens. The algorithm is smart. It learns. So it has an expected value going into the match. Let's say it expects you to have a very equal match against someone and you don't. It gets smarter. It'll drop a person or elevate a person. So as more data goes in, as more unique matches come in, it gets smarter and learns. So Steve, are you actively encouraging people to gamble on pickleball? Is that what's happening? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm actively encouraging people. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a pretty freedom loving guy. So if, <laughs> if people want to do that, I, I don't have a whole huge problem with that. Um, um, yeah, I, I don't have a, I don't have a problem with that. I think that obviously, on a more serious note, uh, there are challenges if 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 and when gambling enters the sport, uh, challenges to integrity and other things that we've seen in tennis. And tennis has really battled that. Um, you you'll talk to players like uh, Amir Delish, who is part of uh, the MLP team. He was you know, top fifty in the world in uh, in singles. Um, and played in a lot of top tournaments, played in a lot of the, the majors, but also played in challengers. And even in challenger events, the next level down from, from the ATP tour, there were times when yeah, there, there, there was uh, offers to, to players, Amir right. and others, to, to have a match result be yeah, yeah, determined. Let's put it that way. I don't, I don't want to get anybody in trouble, but you, you, you get the point. That happens. Uh, we have to make sure that this sport, we're immune from that, which means that we have to tread carefully. We can't allow the gambling limits. If we have gambling, they have to be relatively low limits. But also I think in some ways, fantasy sports are an interesting way to do it as well, where you can try to predict you know, scores and whoever does the best predictions of the matches wins an event where it's, it's, it's less focused on that uh, individual players, but kind of a, a team team concept. That's why I think our MLP format is in some ways a great fantasy sports. Uh, and we, we dabbled with that last year. We allowed people to predict which teams were gonna win. I think we're gonna see more and more of that. And so like, I, I have no problem intellectually or philosophically with gambling. I do have concerns about making sure the sport stays fair and I also, that, that makes me want to make sure that we move cautiously and thoughtfully on that. Okay. Can we, can we talk about the scale in, in general? So Ben Johns is, you know, like a, a seven or something like that. So I guess two part question, when somebody enters at the ground level, what is like, what's, what's the floor in terms of, of rating? And then what's the ceiling as well? Could Ben get to a, a nine, a 10 well, eventually? Eight, eight is conceivable. Just like I think in chess ELO, 3,000 is, is the conceivable number. And Magnus Carlsen is on the edge of, for the first time ever, somebody getting to 2,900. Uh, the conceivable number in pickleball is eight. But to, to do that, that wouldn't mean that if Ben played the next best player, who is you know, right now number two is JW, who's around also around a seven. They're very close. Ben's about 0.1 higher right now, which means, by the way, he would have a lot of, and our rating says about a 58% chance of winning a match right now based on the results. JW was temporarily higher, but he lost two matches a couple weekends ago to, to, to Zane. And so we, he's moved down to number two for now. Uh, anyway, that's a, uh, if, if, if Ben were to try to get to an eight, that would mean he would have to be regularly beating a 7-0 player by scores like 11-2, 11-2. That's, to be a full point better as that's kind of the, the result that you would, so it's conceivable, but that's what would have to happen. And that's, that's why that's unlikely. That being said, you know, there are pro players who are 6.0 singles players. And when they play Ben, they, they typically lose about 11 to 11 to that's mm -hmm. the, and they're great players, but under the old system, you're a, you're, you're a 5.0 or you're, you know, if that, that was kind of the limit of it. And, but that didn't tell you kind of these gradations of different, you know, there's a different, there's still a difference between a super high quality, maybe top 20 player and Ben Jones. And we, we see that from, I think Ben's lost, uh, I think his record this year is like 28 and five, JW is like 30 and three. 
uh, the, and they're playing amazing players. <laughs> they're, they're not playing yeah, amateurs. So there obviously is disparities even at the high levels and it wasn't easy to capture that with other rating systems. We're trying to capture that too. Got it, okay. I think we had a, um, I think we had somebody chime in sort of as a, a, a follow-up to, to what you're saying previously, but um, Scott comments and says, I do not see how Duper is equal in age, specifically age-based singles. Physical speed and fitness is so much different in singles. But if, if, again, if that's true, if a 50 year old is always losing the 20 year old, the 20 year olds will have a higher duper. If, if you're losing, you're, yeah, so it, it, the results speak. Yeah. So but another way I, I put this is, although duper knows your gender and your age, we have it in our database and we show it on your profile, the results don't know. They're, your rating doesn't know. <laughs> they don't, they just know if you're a 4 0 playing a 4 0, that's all it knows. So it can't, it can, in some sense, it can't be biased. Now, that doesn't mean we can't be wrong or we can't have an algorithm that we don't know things. So there's the question is, you know, male versus female. Uh, is our relative ratings correct? Um, it's, a, it's a tough one and I'll tell you why it's tough. It's because we don't have a lot of matches in our database of two males playing two females. So we, we don't have, a lot of the data that would be necessary, especially at the, at the high end pro level. We would need to have those matches to know. So let's say we think that Anna Lee is, you know, how much lower than, than Ben Johns is Anna Lee right now, like 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Yeah, we would need to have matches at, you know, with you know, the waters versus you know, two you know, decent male. We need to have more matches like that. We also need that at, at the 4.0 level, at the 3.5 level. As, those, as we get those results put in our database, then we'll know if women are too high relative to the men or vice versa, they'll move. It, it's, there's, there's nothing in our, in our algorithm that we don't have a thumb on the scale. Sometimes we just don't know, and that's fair. And we might be wrong because we just don't know because we don't have enough data. That's, 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 with, with more data, there is no thumb on the scale. There's no, <laughs> or there, there's, there's no us manipulating it. It's just based on the results. And as, as we like to say, these are self-correcting issues. Got it. I think we can, I think we can end on that note. I think this was, this was great. I, I feel like um, I learned a lot. I, I hope everybody who's watching did too. Uh, if you still have questions, you can message Duper at support at myduper.com, or you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram at duper pb you know, shoot them a dm uh and of course you know download the app and go out there and and post some scores and uh if you have any more questions of course just follow up and um we'll we'll get back to you guys but this was great thanks uh thanks everybody for for joining jill steve this was awesome uh and uh we'll see if if there's a next one if 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 so looking forward to it thanks everybody Thanks, Thomas. Thank you, everyone.